Now, if you've been a long-time subscriber of mine, you may have seen this lowly video here with 182 views. But if you're new to the channel, or discovering it for the first time, it's a journey to find the best Spider-Man game on PC, and my anger towards Sony for not releasing Marvel's Spider-Man on PC sooner. Why do they call it Marvel's anyway? They're all Marvel. But on August 12th, it finally happened. Spider-Man Remastered came to PC. And for anyone living under a rock, you may ask, what's the big deal? But for those with class, I know what you're thinking. Is it worth me spending a- <laughs> Holy shit! Yep, they're doing a rock star. So, my expectations for this are pretty high. In my last video, I looked at the Metacritic score, and I gotta say, it slams all the previous games featuring the webhead. I first watched footage of the game on my friend Mert KK's Twitch channel, and funny enough, Spider-Man on PS4 is how I came across her two years ago. <laughs> so go check out her channel, and tell her I said hey. hey! Okay, what I'm about to say may be upsetting to some. The game, it's not perfect. Look, every game has its jank, and for a game this flawless, you'd expect more. But before I talk about that, let's talk about the difficulty levels. As with any good accessible game these days, there's an easy option. In short, this will allow you to breeze through the game and focus on the story aspects, another topic we'll talk about later. I, however, started on amazing, and I expected it to be pretty average, but it's amazing! As an Arkham fan for the longest time, the combat feels pretty similar, with the exception of the gadget use, which, arguably, I prefer Arkham's version a little bit more, Fumbling through the wheel could be tricky, but it does buy you time when you're in a tense situation. If you don't pay attention to the flow of combat, you will be destroyed. Failing to use dodge effectively kills not only the momentum of the game, but it removes a lot of the fun. Overall, the close combat movement and difficulty are some of the most satisfying I have ever played. But the biggest combat challenge is when the quick time events hit. But by the end of the game, your thumb's gonna get so sore from button mashing, it'll look like this. Hey, who turned out the lights? Yep, once again, my inner Sam Fisher is vibrating with glee at the thought of more stealth. Throwing on the Far From Home stealth suit definitely gave me and chat split the cell vibes, and it's executed pretty well. They even incorporated stealth challenges into some of the end game, but the novelty soon wore off. I'm no game dev, I don't know the detail of stealth mechanics, but I suspect ripping a man from the ground in front of another man's eyes would raise suspicion. But no no. So long as it says safe around the person, you're good to provide involuntary whiplash. Speaking of whiplash, 99.9% .9 of people were not cope swinging from a synthetic glue rope th thing a 16 year old cooked up in a lab without their neck snapping backwards. But Peter can, and boy oh boy does he do it flawlessly. The movement in this game is something else. It's like the devs took all of the old games and sandwiched them together to create this masterpiece. That opening scene swinging through the city makes you feel incredible. And 25 hours into the game, it's clear the devs spent a lot of time developing some kind of black magic sorcery to allow you to fly through Manhattan in the most buttery smooth way you can imagine. I found the movement so good, I wanted to get all the backpacks. No fast travel, just me swinging through Times Square at night. Graphically, the game was alarming. I hadn't updated my drivers and decided to stream it on Twitch totally blind, which led me to being the Tin Man until I turned off DLSS. An update later, and DLSS was working. The game looked incredible, and I was getting amazing frame rates. Uh, what just happened? Uh, and that brings me to my next point. Maybe I played the game too soon after release. Maybe it was my setup, but damn son, the crashes I've had in this game have been frustrating. Midway in the game, after some huge superhero event, there's a gameplay sequence that I was getting approximately 11 FPS on. And it made it damn near unplayable. Fortunately, 97% of the game has been pretty smooth, but even when I turned everything all the way down and capped my frame rates, I got problems. So uh, maybe wait a little bit longer before you buy it. But if you like me and pre-order the game, you've got all of the bonus suits from day one. And each one suits a different environment. <laughs> See what I did there? No one can! I'm a classic guy, and that suit reminds me of the animated series, so I spent a lot of my time using that. But when it started to rain, the Andrew Garfield suit was my choice. And boy oh boy does it look sleek in a moody Manhattan. But on top of movie and cartoon suits, there are a ton of less appreciated ones, and interesting ones, a lot with their own special abilities, so why don't you comment down below what your favourite Spider-Man suit is, and let's start a war. A secret war. Speaking of secret wars, I'm having some conflict about this next topic. The music. 
For most gamers, music's an afterthought. But for well-acquainted superhero video game experts like you and me, it's a bit make or break. So let's get to the point. The music in this game isn't my problem. It's excellent and fits the mood depending on which part of the story you reach. The problem, however, is this. Still not got it? Well, in the pursuit of making you feel amazing, the music swells when you start to swing and has a wonderful crescendo at the end when you land. The first time, yes, incredible, and I felt super. But 45 minutes into the game, I couldn't unhear it and found myself walking instead of swinging to avoid sensory overload. I was up until the point I got a high five off a common mortal, which made me feel unsuper, and I decided enough is enough. And that's what this game does so well. When you play the game as the devs intended, it makes you feel like a hero. Ultimately, it plays like your favorite Spider-Man comic turned into a movie. It has so many collectibles and challenges, which gives it a replayability that you might find tedious after a while, but that's until you get bored of swinging around or punching low-life scum in the face. Also, it features Stan Lee, which is pretty sweet. One last thing, I, I, I didn't bump into Black Cat yet, but maybe I will in a future video, so... Drop an F in the chat if you're a Felicia fan.